I started um, painting in 2000, I was a professional in 2008, nine. But I started painting in 2006. Um, it, it all started in my secondary school, you know, when um, I always loved to draw. Then there's this guy in my class then, he was a very good, you know, pencil artist and bio artist. So I wanted to learn how to draw, you know, superheroes and stuff. And then we had a, like a batter. I said, okay, he, he liked my handwriting because I, I, I write like calligraphy. You know, I was good at it, I, I, I mastered it. So he wanted to learn how to, to write like that. And I wanted to learn how to draw. So we, we exchanged talents, you know, taught each other stuff. After my NIIT, you know, course, I said, I wanted to do art. I didn't want to do, I didn't know how to go about it. So there was this painter in the Keja that I went to meet. Uh, he's a roadside painter and I said, I wanted to know how to paint like you. I thought it was the greatest at the time because I, I, every time I passed through, you know, I see I was barely 16. So I, I, took, I took some money to him. I, I don't know how much, probably a couple, few, five cases, I don't know. I said, I wanted to learn how to paint because I didn't have much money. And he said, what about you? Mostly, the way they do this, normally the way Nigeria setting is, is like an apprentice now. They bring your parents bring you and <laughs> but me it wasn't like that so I just told him I wanted to learn how to paint he said okay where's your parent I said I just want to do it myself he said what do you have I told him we collected the money and then he said resume on Monday so I started going there I was I didn't spend up to it, probably it's not up to like eight months and then I left you know so from then I, I started practicing art on my own by 2008 this happened in 2006. By 2008, I was exhibiting at Didi Museum, big places, you know what I mean? Like group at ETA Foundation, I was doing exhibitions with them, and Studio 88, you know, big places. But my first painting was sold to Rashid Balamoshi. He said, who painted this? And I came out and I was like, ah, oh, you're such a small boy. How much do you want to sell it? Then I said, 50K. <laughs> he smiled, and then he bought it. Because then that was when I knew people were making millions from art. I didn't know it was going to be this big. I was like, ah. But when I first got there, when before, I, before the exhibition, yeah, they asked me, the curator asked me, how much do you want to put on your painting? And I'm like, eh, maybe 20,000. The curator looked at me and said, okay, you know what? I like you, I like your work. Let me help you out. Let me show you prices of other people so you can think about your own price. And then I started saying 400,000. I said, is it for the artwork? <laughs> I say, I don't worry, I'll bring my new price. I'm, I'm working on it. And then I started bringing 200, 150, and 50. I was just bringing so. But me, believe me, I'm ready to sell for 30,000. So. You know, but the man bought one of my paintings, the one that was like for 50K. I could have sold it for 200K. But I was just looking like, this one, not too fine, this one, not too fine. I saw works that are not as good as mine that were like up to like a millionaire. So after that, I raised the bar, you know. I started using better materials, you know, I could buy, I could afford it. I started in oil on canvas, acrylic on canvas. And then, I've participated in a lot of exhibitions. I have a lot of clients I paint for now. Now my paintings go as much as a million, half a million, couple hundred thousand. You know, I'm no longer in that, because I know what art is now. What inspired paintings for me was the love for nature. I'm this kind of person that I go somewhere I look at people, I, I try to see through their eyes, what they're going through. Uh, I see leaves, I see birds. I always love to paint butterflies. Insects, butterflies, this is my thing because birds and butterflies are like one of the most beautiful you know, animals God created. And then I love painting them. <clears throat> That's why I love art basically, because I mean, you can do what you like. Art is not, is not, there's, not there's no standards to it. You can say you want to, you, want, you, can, you can see you want to paint abstract and that's what you want to do and people will appreciate you for it. So I love it because of the nature that it brings with it. Like it's natural, there's no fakeness with it. If it's art, it's art, if it's not art, it's not art. So I mean other things, there's a way you can go around it. But if you're not a good artist, it will show in your work. How many? Most of my paintings, I like to preach hope. Hope and um, a bit of uh, empathy, empathy. Like, I like to preach that at the end of the day, no matter what you're going through, something big is out there for you. Some, there's always a light after the tunnel. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I've done paintings for, when the, the girls were kidnapped, the, uh, the girls were kidnapped recently, about a couple years ago. I did a painting of a girl smiling, a little girl smiling. And people were asking me, supposed to be, she's supposed to be crying. 
Why is she not crying? Are you if you say you are saying you are dedicating this painting to the girls that were kidnapped, I'm like, okay. If a girl that was kidnapped was finally brought to her family, she's going to smile, right? So me, I'm feeling, I'm optimistic that she's going to be released and then she's going to see her family. This is the smile I expect to see. So I'm not about just pain, 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 pain. I know a lot of people want to pain, pain, children cry. I know, yes, but I mean, this is Nigeria. We need hope. My biggest influences, uh, they will be Michelangelo. You know, one thing I, I appreciate about him is the fact that he's not just a painter, he's a scientist, he's, he's, a, he's an all-round genius, that's what I'll call him, and that's what I am. Because I do music, I produce music, I, I play instruments, you know, I, I paint, so it means that there's that atom of that thing that he has, even if it's just a drop of it in me. Because he is a scientist, he's a painter, he discover he discovers things. So um, and he's done one of the major paintings that the world remembers, you know, like the, the painting of the twelve disciples and all that. Then um, another person I like is, is still alive. Uh, his name is Michael uh, Michael Lang. Now it's not Michelangelo. Michael Lang is uh, he does. Um, Futuristic paintings, uh, imaginary, imaginary paintings. He's, he works with his mind more than references. He doesn't do hyperrealism, even though he has paintings in that in that direction. But basically, he does paintings that are from his mind. So he taught me how to how to create things from my mind. Just just hold my pencil or hold my brush and just go. And any day, it looks like something you want to buy. And you are, and I, I'm, most times when I paint, I don't I don't know what I'm doing. It's through the painting I discover, oh, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going. And then it comes, at the end of the day, it just comes into a very full you know, circle. Yeah, after that. But from the beginning, I'm just working with my mind. Man. So it's, it's, he helped me do that. How do I create time for my art and other things that I do? This is how it is. I discovered something. You know, over the years, I've been painting since 2000 and let's say seven eight to this time i've been painting and then there was a time my music took a lot of my time away so i didn't bother painting and now i felt like i could not merge it it was too stressful tasking ah how will i be painting i've been singing this is because i need to sit down calm down be on my chair for like five six hours painting one particular thing and then i have to go for events interviews shows and i'm like i can't i can't manage it but you see it's because you don't want to manage it. Now, I look at it this way. There are times when I chill with my friends, we just want to discuss, have fun, have share ideas. And then, it was supposed to be for one hour, right? All of a sudden, we're talking, and they start talking about girls, two hours goes, three hours going. And someone says, oh, let's, ah, man, let Sharon come through now. And then six hours, seven hours. I don't see that as a waste of time. I see that as part of networking. But you can network in one hour, bro. So I try to create fun while I'm working. That is, you know, playing music while I'm painting, or just on the phone with a friend, maybe while I'm painting. So, I mean, that's it. But really, it's just that I've learned to manage my time well. How do I gather my collector base? Um, I, I pretty much work with a lot of big people, big names. You know, don't ask for them. And most of them, I learned one thing from the man called Les Brown. He's a motivational speaker. He says. Render more service than you're paid for. Render more service than you're paid for. Meaning that if someone is paying 100,000, for example, for, for your art, give them an art that when people say, wow, they cannot be proud to say it's 2 million about it. Don't let the person say it's not fine. So they have to say it's 100k, I not to spend money. Make them want to increase the price because of what you did. Let them be saying like I cheated the artist to the artist I cheated. They don't, let them make let them feel like they cheated you because you know what you want. So most of the times I do paintings from when I was studying for small price to big price. I never used to do a painting for somebody and say somebody they pay much. So if you tell me you like a particular painting I've sold before and tell me to do something like that for you, I would even if you're not paying as much, I would still do better than that one because it's a new work. I think I price my house based on time that I put in. I don't price it based on, on um, maybe how beautiful you think it is. Because sometimes beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. 
I know what I what I put in and how much time to rack my brain to get the best output for this apple. Big. This medium here is gouache on paper. That is gouache. I mean, that's why it's glassed because I mean it can be destroyed by water. You know, so, but this medium is on canvas, oil on canvas. This kind of medium is oil on canvas. It's oil on canvas. I see I use beads too as well. It's oil on canvas. So this one you can clean it up, clean it up. So people glass it as well, but there's no point with glass it because the beauty is when you can touch it. But this is glass, so this is gouache on paper. Yeah. Most of all these paintings have titles, names and biography of each art. Sometimes it's not just me that create the biographies of the art because sometimes I paint from my imagination. Then I have a team of people that come and tell me, Minjin, what I see here is this. And I'm looking, oh yes, it's true. I see royalty, I see like a king, I see a crown, because it's abstract, abstract is from your mind. Sometimes you can't always be the one to know. It's like sometimes when, when um, you have an idea, and like a video director, an artist sings a song, and the video director is not drawing the concept, it's like that. Sometimes you are the painter, you have people that will tell you, this is what I feel about, this art, this art means this to me. You know, so sometimes I paint something, doesn't mean something. A girl, I painted a painting one time and a girl was crying when she saw the painting. She said, this is like me. You know, I painted a girl covered her face like she's maybe being raped and then she's feeling somewhat, you know, um, sad about it. And then the girl said, it. I, I just painted because I just wanted to depict not someone being sad actually, maybe someone that is reminiscing about her life. And then she's saying, oh, this thing meant a lot to me because of what I've been through in my life. So I think art sometimes, sometimes you sing a song, the artist didn't cry when he was singing in the studio. But by the time he put the song out, Everybody's crying and saying, oh, that song made me cry. So sometimes art is like what you're giving out there. People relate to it in different ways. Some people see it as a point to smile, point to cry, to reminisce. It gives some people strength, you know, so that's it. It's your boy, Min Jin, one and only African king. All right, uh, my social media handles are king, at King Min Jin Official, K-I-N-G-M-I-N-J-I-N Official, yeah, together. No underscore, no dash, no full stop. Um, on Instagram, on Snapchat is at King Jin, just straight. Then um, my art page is at Skookum Art, S K O O K U M, Skookum Art. So basically, that's where all my um, art stuff, art pieces are put. You can see me do my thing, you see processes of me working, stage one, stage two, stage three, like that, like that, like that. So right now, I'm happy you watched the show. Um, I'm happy I, I'm on the show because I enjoy the show, Wazovia TV. Keep watching it, don't touch it, keep it locked down because next time you see me is at my exhibition because it's going to be live on Wazovia TV. I love you guys so much, thank you so much. Yeah. To enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.